I do not believe that he was a child molester or a pedophile in any way, shape, or form. We're looking at a life filled with children. And that singing. makes him a pedophile? Honestly, I find it incredibly difficult to listen to Michael Jackson's music in 2019. Not that I don't want to. Literally the entire day yesterday, I had songs stuck in my head and I felt like I was waving them away like flies that were in my face. Uh, can I personally listen to Michael Jackson's music? I listen to it from the minute I wake up in the morning, in my car, I listen to it at the gym, I listen to it at home, I make all my friends listen to it, I make them listen to the songs that have never been released before that I have found like in the depths of YouTube. But it doesn't make you uncomfortable, you personally. You, you don't hear the, the bad intentions out of Mike when you don't see... Have you heard any of Michael Jackson's songs? What bad intentions are you referencing? Famous thriller album song, PYT, Pretty Young Thing. I want to love you, PYT, Pretty Young Thing. It just feels uncomfortable now. It feels like he's talking not about some young 18, 19, 20 year old, but the actual people that he was into, which are between the ages of seven and 14. So you're telling me that you think PYT was written about a prepubescent boy? Do you not? I, I don't think that. I'm, because? I'm sort of stunned that in because. hindsight- Because? Why do you not think that? I do not believe that he was um, a child molester or a pedophile in any way, shape or form. There are, there are so many things that are so much more important than like, do we play Michael Jackson's music at a party or do we have to like stop everything and turn it off? I just think it's irrelevant. And I think the fact that we're talking about it is even more irrelevant. For me though, drawing the line is weird, right? I, I like movies, I teach movies, and I'm not gonna stop teaching Harvey Weinstein movies, which sucks because he funded 50 of the greatest movies of all time, but he did not write and direct them. When they put their personality into the work, when it is their image entirely, it feels more personal. But I don't know that there is an exact line, and I think it's a difficult place to be. It's as if the audience is the jury, and all we're allowed to hear is the prosecution's case, and then we're all supposed to vote on a man's life. To put it frankly, I mean, that's insane. He told me if they ever found out what we were doing. He and I would go to jail for the rest of our lives. From Jump, the documentary is, is one-sided, it is manipulative, it is irresponsible. I do believe the documentary. It still seems weird to me that a grown man built a ranch, sort of an amusement park, populated it with young children, openly admitted to sleeping in beds with them, and we're all just supposed to think that like, yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. It's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. He was kind of like a child. Yeah, I see it, that makes sense. It doesn't add up to me. And when we've got multiple people, not two, but three, more even, who seem to think this, I believe them. And you know what? If they're lying, they're really good actors. And they probably deserve other work outside the documentary. Are we saying that Michael Jackson was sleeping in beds with children? Or are we saying that Michael Jackson allowed children to sleep in his bedroom? Because the thing that people don't know is Michael Jackson's bedroom was a duplex. It had three bathrooms and two levels. There was a lot of places to sleep in his bedroom. You and I can't conceptualize a bedroom being the size of our parents' house. But for Michael Jackson, it was as if, you know, he was allowing children to sleep in his home because the guest quarters you had to take a train to because they were so far away. Like his bedroom was not a well, person's bedroom why, that we've ever why seen. Why were the parents not staying in that room as well? A lot of the time they were. But not always. Why ever? I, I can't speak to that. We're looking at a life filled with children. He had a Super Bowl show. It was like a million children standing around him while and he's singing. And that makes him a pedophile? Not necessarily, but when the accusations are paired with that, plus everything it's else. It's creepy and it's weird. It just is. Have you ever thought it might be true? I have questions and I have answered my own questions and I feel fantastic going to sleep every night knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is innocent. I, I, I feel that I know that. As a Michael Jackson fan for um, 
I'd say the majority of my life since I'm seven years old. I, and I think that I can, I can speak for, um, if not all of the Michael Jackson fan community, solid percentage of them. We do not want to support and be fans of a pedophile. If there's a lot of evidence that points to the fact that he did this, we don't want to keep waving our Michael Jackson flags. We want to just put our tail between our legs and slink away and you know hope nobody notices. Now, post Me Too, there's a reason people feel empowered. They're not as afraid as they were a few years ago. We should be listening much harder now than we were before. I don't know that these guys are super incentivized. Sure, money, that might be a very real thing for them, but I promise you every single day these dudes are living with death threats. I strongly believe that Michael Jackson's legacy will live on past our ages, past you know our, our children's ages. I think his legacy will live on. There is just no way to cancel him. I mean, even Wade Robson has said that people should not mute Michael Jackson. I think that there's a lot more that we have yet to see about Michael Jackson, you know, past, present, and future. And I think that it would be silly to think that his legacy is, is tarnished. I don't think it could ever be. What I think will happen with Michael Jackson's legacy is he will be temporarily canceled, the same way that Charlie Chaplin was, the same way that Kobe Bryant was for a few years, and then there's gonna come a time where people go, we have enough distance from it, let us celebrate the music, the same way that we still listen to Wagner, the same way that when you go to the Musée d'Orsay, you can still see Edgar Degas paintings. We will separate ourselves and there will be a legacy. Hopefully we don't see things in such a binary in the future and people make up their own minds about what they feel about his legacy. But the music, if for no other reason than Quincy Jones was a genius, music's not going anywhere.